Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Satyajit and you're watching Satyajit's artwork. In this video, I'm going to paint a portrait using watercolors. If you are keen to know about the brand of watercolor paint that I use uh, and the kind of paper I used for this particular painting then you can visit the description there I have uh, written all those things and uh, I have also given the link of the paper uh, and the colors that you can buy if you wish especially at this particular situation buying online is the most preferable way I guess so guys before uh, proceeding any further I'd like to request you that if you are new to my channel uh, and you are watching my videos for the very first time then I'd like to request you to subscribe to my channel for more informatic painting videos like this in future and uh, if you are already a subscriber of mine then please like this video and also share with your dear ones who are interested in art and uh, they will find this video helpful moreover uh, if also possible guys uh, leave a comment it will only appreciate my efforts while making these videos Now guys uh, in this particular video I am going to actually discuss about three very important aspects of watercolor painting that is often undermined by beginners when they just start with watercolors. The first important aspect is about understanding the mediums and the colors of your subject or the reference image that you are taking. So what is about understanding the medium? When I say understanding the medium then I am just speaking about the colors that you are going to use for that particular uh, subject or that particular painting. In this case it is watercolor. So what I meant is that you should have a very clear idea of what watercolor is, what kind of medium it is, how it is used, uh, what are its uh, characteristics, uh, uh, what sets its apart from other mediums. So. I often see that people doesn't uh, do their homework well like they don't uh, know about all those things uh, before starting a painting and then when they just start with uh, painting then they miserably fail and eventually they just get frustrated and they kind of say like that oh no watercolor is a very tough medium I cannot do that and all but the homework is very essential guys you have to be very uh, precise about the kind of uh, medium you are using and what are the possibilities that you can bring from that particular uh, medium for an example in this particular case as watercolor is a transparent medium so watercolor is a kind of medium where the driving force is water itself that's why it is called watercolor in this case you are using pigment but you are not using the pigment in a very thick manner like the other opaque paints like oils acrylics etc in this case you try to make it very dilute with water and then you just try to paint over on your surface so this is very important I see a lot of the people doesn't give more emphasis on the amount of water that you need to use while painting with watercolors and they just end up uh, with a painting that looks more opaque and they just kind of say like that oh I know I cannot uh, achieve the transparency how can I achieve the transparency if you want to achieve the transparency then you have to first understand about the mediums so now keeping that aside I'll go to the second part that is uh, about uh, the colors you need to identify from your reference image so this is very important whether you are painting from life or you are just taking a reference image or that is like photograph for your reference uh, this is very important that you just uh, uh, get an overall view of the colors that are present in your subject this is not about getting each and every individual color at the very initial stage for an example in this particular case her face uh, consists of a lot of orangish tint and uh, yellowish tint so I was very much like 
but precise about these two colors that I will start with that and if you have noticed I also started with a very thin wash of those two colors uh, a very orangish tint which is obviously diluted with crimson leg and a bit of gamboge yellow in order to paint the whole paper with a very thin layer of paint so this is very important when it comes to understanding the colors that you should be very much like uh, precise about the colors that you can use on your subject irrespective of the fact that you are just trying to block in certain colors on certain areas with watercolors the consistency is very important and for that reason getting the niche of colors at the very initial stage is very important guys the second thing that i'm gonna discuss is about the mid tones and retaining the lighter values as you can see i have proceeded so far by retaining the lighter uh, values so i started with the lighter values at the initial stage so that when i will paint over it with the mid tones see i'm not moving or shifting to the darker tones very initially and now at this stage you can see that i'm just working on the eyes and i'm just using a very dark value of prussian blue mixed with a bit of crimson lake uh, uh, and a bit of burnt sienna in order to create a kind of color that looks like black but that isn't black so that is a darker tone i agree but before that um, i haven't used uh, much of darker values in any place it is all about the mid tones and those mid tones are actually placed over in such a way that it's actually showing through the lighter values so in this way you create the dimension see i'm not creating a sculpture it is not three dimensional it is two dimensional so all those things are very essential in order to make the thing look realistic that you have to create the illusion of three dimensional effect on a two dimensional surface so these values uh, and the understanding of which value should go over which one is very important guys at this stage you can see that i have captured the overall uh, aspects of her face quite well and you can see that for the wrinkles also i didn't try to copy it slavishly it is not even important to copy it slavishly you just need to understand what wrinkles look like and wrinkles are very organic it can change over the period of time it is impression of age someone is aging and that's why he is developing wrinkles it is like a tree uh, when you paint a tree you never paint a tree uh, by looking at each individual leaves you know that it contains leaves but leaves are always moving it can be blown off by the wind it is not like that uh, it is always stagnant it is always moving it is like always changing and so as this particular thing you need to keep in mind that i don't need to copy it as exactly as it is in my reference image or the way uh, my drawing was i can change things in my previous video also that is that drawing video i told that i'm drawing it in quite detail but a lot of the things will be changed when i'll paint it so this is the thing you should be always thinking about uh, changing things as per your convenience rather than just getting stagnant at a point and not ready to accept things in a way that can make a lot of difference so now we are reaching to the end of this particular portrait and so i'd like to share the third and the most important aspect of watercolor painting and that is about detailings without getting too much caught up in the process of making the painting look opaque for an example that hat i am painting but see you can see that i used a very thin and transparent uh, color for the very base layers and certain areas i'm also going wet on wet and i'm not concerned about the sharp edges initially it is not even important that you should be going for the sharp edges you try to keep the things as uh, loose as possible and later when you will use those sharp details on certain areas then it will create a lot of difference rather than just going over it with sharp details from the very initial stage it will make it look very uh, mechanical and inorganic that we obviously don't want so whenever we will try to add details in watercolors we need to keep in mind that it is not an opaque medium it is a transparent medium so it is very important that we put things like uh, we did in the very first stage that is uh, the consistency of the water is very important in that case we cannot think like that oh it is the details part and i just need to put out the color from the tube and just uh, i need to paint it uh, over in order to make certain areas darker it is not like that you need to increase the intensity of the colors but you should be making it as fluid as possible so that it looks like it is not stagnant so guys at this stage you can see that i have reached to the end of this video i hope this video was informative and you learned something out of it if 
so then please let me know your thoughts in the comment section see you soon guys with my next video till then take care and keep working Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you want to support my work, then please do like, comment, and share my works. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon, which is very important, so that you get notified as soon as I post a new video.